ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له لا شريك له في ربوبيته وألوهيته وأسمائه وصفاته وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله عليه وعلى أزواجه الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وعلى خلفاء الراشدين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين وعلى كل من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين قال الله عز وجل في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد all praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him, we seek His help and aid, and we ask Allah to protect us. We ask Allah to forgive us. We seek refuge in Allah <clears throat> from the evils of our own selves and from the sins that we commit. Indeed, whoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide. And whoever He causes to go astray, there is none who can guide. I testify that there is none deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah. The best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The worst of religious matters are those that are innovated and every religious innovation is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a misguidance. And every misguidance will be in the fire of hell. Wa'yadhu billah. May Allah protect all of us from the fire of hell. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. My dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, in today's khutbah, we will recap some of the lessons we have learned in Ramadan and also we will highlight some of the ways that we can maintain the momentum we have gained in Ramadan. Ramadan has left us. It ended with Eid al-Fitr. But the useful lessons that we have learned, the useful lessons that we have taken from Ramadan, should remain with us every day of our lives. If we do not take lessons from Ramadan, and if we do not accept that Ramadan is there to teach us, then we will be at a loss. Every Ramadan that comes and passes is like a month-long boot camp or a training camp that teaches us how to live the rest of our lives after Ramadan. Ramadan shows us the true potential of adopting 
a lifestyle that is closer to our ideal Islamic value. Living the days and nights of Ramadan with a reoriented focus and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us a standard by which we can evaluate ourselves the rest of the year. None of us can deny that the month of Ramadan drives us to bond more strongly with our families and with our communities. We should learn from that and continue with the same way after Ramadan. Let us not allow the fruits of Ramadan to be lost. During the month of Ramadan, we stay away from the halal during the daytime on the, on the fasting on the month of Ramadan. This should teach us to stay away from the haram during the rest of our lives. If it is easy to stay away from the halal, then it should be easy to stay away from the haram. Remember the right of Allah does not end with the ending of Ramadan. Although the month of Ramadan has ended, the right of Allah never ends. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدُ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ That worship your Lord until death comes to you. The objective of Ramadan was to teach us to attain taqwa, the consciousness and the awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every moment of our lives. Taqwa should prevent us from committing sins. Taqwa should prevent us from the punishment and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And taqwa should prevent us from the hellfire. And that's the main lesson that we have learned in Ramadan to inculcate taqwa, to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every moment of our lives. And this will prevent us from committing sins. Ali radiallahu an, he defined taqwa as being, as being fearful of the jalil, acting upon the tanzil, being content with khalil, and preparing for the day of rahil. Meaning, taqwa has to do with fearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acting upon the Quran, being content with little, and preparing for the journey to the hereafter. So now that Ramadan is over, we should have inculcated an elevated or an heightened amount of taqwa that can carry us through for the rest of the months until Ramadan returns, the training camp, the spiritual retreat. So right now, we should have an elevated amount of awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to carry us through. The next lesson of Ramadan is the constant practice of sabr, patience. Indeed, fasting requires patience. And Ramadan taught us the important life lesson of patience that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in Surah Al-Asr that Allah describes all of mankind as being in a state of loss except those who believe, those who do good and enjoin one another to truth and enjoin one another to patience. <clears throat> another lesson is to that we have learned from Ramadan is to escape from our own desires. The desire to go off and the desire to do things for show. 
We have learned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has teach us, has taught us in the fasting that fasting is different from the other ibadat. The salah, the zakah, and the hajj, these are ibadat that people could see. But the sound, the fasting, it's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no room for showing off. There is no room for riyah. You could look someone in the face without knowing if they're fasting or not. That this is what Ramadan taught us. Ramadan taught us to train ourselves to get rid of this disease of the heart that is called riya, doing things for show. <clears throat> Another lesson that we get from Ramadan is that Ramadan taught us to get rid of bukhul, stinginess, miserliness, and to think of others, to spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is another lesson that we have learned. Another lesson that we learned from Ramadan is to strengthen the bond and the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan taught us that we can be close to Allah if we decide and if we seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Ramadan brings us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We observe the fast and we pray at night everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this connection that we have built during Ramadan, let this carry us through and be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the rest of the months. Until Ramadan returns again, then we can, we can rejuvenate and we can recharge our spiritual batteries. Another lesson that we learned from Ramadan is that Ramadan helps us to attain both physical and spiritual healing. The values and discipline we observe in Ramadan should help us to make our worship encompass our whole life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, Kul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen that our whole prayers, sacrifices, life of my life and my death all are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ramadan taught us this concept that our whole life is for ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, another unique lesson derived from Ramadan is that change is possible. Change is possible. We give up bad habits because of Ramadan. If we were being angry, if we, we had some bad habits, we spent too much time on social media, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has trained us to spend more time with the Qur'an and less time on wasteful things. So Ramadan has changed us. Ramadan has taught us that we can change, that change is possible with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During Ramadan, we guard our tongues. We didn't look at haram. We didn't speak haram. We didn't listen to haram. Let us continue with that. Ramadan taught us that we can get rid of all these bad habits and we can inculcate some new habits, some Islamic habits, some good values. Let us continue with that. Inshallah, we will now look at some of the ways we can maintain the momentum we've gained in Ramadan. One of the true signs of acceptance of your Ramadan is transformation, change. That what has happened in Ramadan and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped us to do in Ramadan is because of three things. One, because of the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two, it happens because of your taqwa and your obedience to Allah. Three, it happens because of ijtima'u ta'ah, 
gathering together upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you keep these three things in your lives help of Allah taqwa and ijtima wa ta'a then you could continue after Ramadan if you are able to overcome a weakness in Ramadan you can continue to overcome that weakness and turn that weakness into a strength after Ramadan with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you want to make transformations it is Allah Azza wa Jal alone who can make it possible so don't trust yourself trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make lots of dua and be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and depend on him and trust in him the next thing is your taqwa after developing the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will protect you from harm and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from the shaitan your taqwa will shield you against shaitan with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have to think about what is my plan you have to devise a plan before Ramadan all of us we had some plan that we will spend so much time worshiping Allah we had a list of the du'as we want to ask Allah before Ramadan we had a plan now we must have a post Ramadan plan how we can continue the momentum after Ramadan so we must devise a plan put a plan in place and try to follow and stick to that plan a plan that will save you from the hellfire a plan that will take you to Jannatul Firdaus bi'idhnillahi ta'ala so let first let me look at some of the the acts of worship let us start with the fasting Ramadan is over it doesn't mean that our fasting should be over Ramadan taught us to continue fasting so let us start with the fasting that we should inculcate the habit of fasting Mondays and Thursdays the Sunnah fast of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and also we should fast on the 13th 14th and 15th Ayyamul Bid of the the lunar calendar so we should inculcate this put this in our plan that we should continue fasting now that Ramadan is over <coughs> but we should first of all start with the fasting of the six days of Shawwal the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Man soma Ramadan thumma atba'ahu sitta min shawwal kana ka siyam dahar that whoever fast Ramadan and follows it with six days of shawwal it is as if he fasted the entire year so let us start with that the six days of shawwal and then we put into plan the fasting on Mondays and Thursdays and the ayam will be the, the white days <coughs> the next is our five daily salah this should continue after Ramadan in order for us to continue the momentum after Ramadan we should not give up on our salah if Ramadan taught us that we should get up in the morning for Salatul Fajr because we had to eat the suhoor then my brothers we should continue with that we should continue with our five daily prayers and this will help us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us as long as you continue with your prayers you disregard your salah and then you will see the difference that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause difficulties in your life so this is important your salah is important another thing is the Quran don't cut your relation with the Quran you spent hours upon hours 
trying to finish reciting the Quran. You spent hours upon hours listening to the Quran. You don't want to cut the relations with the Quran. The Quran is there for you to listen, for you to recite, for you to reflect upon, and for you to take lessons so that you could improve your life and improve your thinking so that we can earn the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. My brothers and my sisters, another way to maintain the momentum from Ramadan is by doing small deeds consistently. In one hadith, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ حَبَّ الْعَمَلِ إلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَمُهُ وَإِنْقَلُ" that know that the best deed most loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one which is done constantly even if it is little so we want to continue the momentum after Ramadan let's continue by doing small deeds constantly you're reciting the Quran every day after Salatul Fajr do it constantly you give charity every time you come to the masjid you, you put a dollar in the box do it constantly make it every day one dollar do it constantly it looks small and insignificant but it is heavy on the scale on yawm al qiyamah another way to maintain the momentum is to repent often that we need to turn back to Allah often we need to, to do self-evaluation, muhasaba, to evaluate yourself and turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make repentance, make tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the middle of the fasting ayah, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِ أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَآن فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ that <clears throat> make dua to Allah, seek repentance, continue and make repentance to Allah because you don't know the, the, the sins and the minor sins if you hurt someone. Continue make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As humans we slip up, as humans we err, so we have to continue make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another way to continue the momentum is to focus on the ibadah that moves you the most. Although we have to continue with our faraid, our compulsory ibadah, we can choose the ones that we love the most to do. Some of us will love to recite the Quran. Some of us will love to, to teach. Some of us will love to make dhikr. We could spend hours and hours making dhikr. Some of us, we will, we will make dua for hours. So look at, the, look at the ibadah that you love and that's easy for you and try to capitalize on those and do it consistently. <clears throat> Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he said, Allah has opened up for his servants doors of goodness. For some, he opens doors of fasting. For others, he opens doors of charity. Others yet, doors of knowledge and teaching. And for others, doors of abstinence and contentment. And I am pleased that what Allah has opened up for me in educating people. So we have to choose the ones that we love and we have to be uh, consistent in that. <clears throat> Another way to keep up the momentum is by keeping good company. Look at your circle of friends. Do they remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
or is there peer pressure always to distract you from the remembrance of Allah? So you have to choose your friends properly. That if you want to continue the momentum before Ramadan, you get rid of some of your bad company. So after Ramadan, then you should not hook up or you should not connect back with those bad companies. Choose your friends wisely. The Prophet said, that a man follows the religion of his friend. So each one should consider whom he makes his friend. So keep company with the righteous is one of the best ways to abstain from sins and to lead a life of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another way to help in to keep up the momentum from Ramadan is by being realistic in your self-expectations that set goals for yourself but set realistic goals set goals that you could able to, to reach don't set unrealistic goals set goals that you could able to achieve and then you do self muhasaba self-evaluation and be honest about yourself see to see if you reach those goals if not then you you readjust and make different goals so this is one important tool that will help you another way to keep up the momentum is by being compassionate to others remember in ramadan you were super nice to everyone you were you you never want to, to hurt someone's feelings because you're always conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let this continue after Ramadan. Be nice to everyone so that you could achieve the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another way to keep up the momentum is by embracing family time. In Ramadan, you spend time in suhoor with your families. You spend time in iftar with your families. Continue spending time with your family. Continue make special time, bond with your family. So this will help all of us to continue the momentum from Ramadan. Also, we should give generously. We should continue doing charity. We should, we should continue giving for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will help us to be very selfless and not selfish. We will think of others as we did in Ramadan. And as also, as we said, constantly making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be steadfast is another way of continuing and keep up the, the momentum from Ramadan. Another thing is that we should always review our intentions, our niyyah, our intention should show, show solely be pleasure of Allah. Ikhlas un niyyah. Ikhlas un niyyah. Sincerity, our intentions, we should always evaluate our intentions. Another, another way of continuing the momentum is that don't leave efforts if you make a mistake. So if you made a mistake, don't, don't drop this act of good deed and... and and don't go back to it. If you make a mistake, always continue to rectify your mistakes and continue doing the act of good deed. <clears throat> For example, if you were reciting Quran one hour in Ramadan, and it's difficult for you after Ramadan, so lower the time, make it half an hour, but just don't stop reciting Quran. So with this, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to help us, <clears throat> we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to continue the momentum from Ramadan. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to make us among those who are able to hold on to the lessons that we have learned in Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the people of taqwa. May He accept our good deeds, forgive us, keep us safe and protected. 
both in this life and the next, and make us all enter his Jannatul Firdaus. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Allahumma aslih ahwal al-Muslimin fi Filistin. Allahumma aslih ahwal al-Muslimin fi Filistin wa fi kulli makan. Ya dal jalali wal ikram. Rabbana afrig alayhim sabran wa thabbit aqadamahum wa ansurhum ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma makkir lahum wakfihim bima shi'ta in tansurhum fala ghalib lahum wa in takhdhuluhum faman dhalladhi yansurhum min ba'dik. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina azab al-nar. Allahumma ya maqallib al-kulub thabit kuluban ala dinik. Allahumma ya masarif al-kulub. Sarif kulubana ala ta'atik Ya hayu ya qayyum Wa bi rahmatika nastaghith Aslih lana sha'nana kullah Wa la takilna illa Ila anfusina tarfata ayn Wa sallallahu wa sallam Ala nabiyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Wa aqimu salah